OK. So the subjects of this video will be editing 3D models from video games for use in Peppercory Designer 3. Now, if you're here, I'm sure you're familiar with Peppercory Designer. It's a program that allows you to open 3D models and unwrap them or unfold them, should I say, it's in order to reassemble them in Papercraft. Just to give you an example of that. It unfolds the object of the model and turns it into a nice papercraft project. But the problem is, is that because this is from a video game, this model, uh, there is a lot of intersecting meshes and objects. Now, to illustrate that point, we're going to leave Kabukura because we are going to be using a program called Blender. Now, Blender is a 3D modeling, animation, rendering piece of software. It's completely free. It's amazing, really. I highly recommend it. You can do just about anything in terms of 3D art and visual effects and CGI. <clears throat> and there's millions of tutorials on YouTube because it's got a great community as well. So, anyway, just because I'm going to operate on the principle that you don't know anything about Blender, I'm going to screencast keys, which will just show you what I'm pressing in order to do what I'm doing. Now, we start with this scene. It's got a cube and a lamp and a camera. Now we don't need any of that, we don't need to even think about that, so I pressed A to select all and then X to delete. Okay, now file and we're going to import the 3D model that we're going to be using. So this is model and as you can tell it's from a video game called Legends of Zelda Skyward Sword. Now, the reason we can't just unwrap this in Peppercora and model it, or assemble it, should I say, is because if we go into wireframe mode by pressing Z, we can see that there's a lot of intersecting clip meshes clipping into each other and colliding. So, as you can imagine, if we were to take all these objects and unwrap them, assemble them, they wouldn't fit together because they're occupying the same space, which is impossible in the real world but in blender well so first of all i'm going to tab to go into edit mode and the first problem with this mesh is doubles now doubles are when two vertices occupy the same space so we're just going to select all and press w for the specials menu and remove doubles that's removed 385 vertices from our mesh so now we need to separate the object into its individual islands. Now what I mean by islands is objects that are only connected to themselves, if that makes sense. It'll make sense when I do this. So I'm going to press L to select the island and now press G I can move this around and you can see that this is its own separate thing. It wasn't connected to the top, it was just co collided. It was just in that space, not connected by vertices or anything. So we're going to press P and that will separate this from the object by selection because in Blender these are all individual objects. Even though these are separate, like this is its own island, it's still a part of this whole object. But anyway, first of all we're going to select this and in the outliner window we're just going to rename it into something identifiable and I'm going to call it the hilt. Now we'll do the rest and separate the other objects, other islands from the objects into their own separate objects. So, oh, that wasn't right. Press it. We're going to select this one, press L, P by selection, uh, L, P by selection, 
L V by selection. Now, let's start naming them. Now we've got hold of this bottom piece of the guard, so we will name that guard bottom. And then we'll select this and we'll call it guard middle. And we'll call this one. Oh, we need to actually select green him first. We'll call this guard. Can you guess? So now we've separated it, it makes it a whole lot easier to remove the internal geometry that's collided. And we're going to start just hiding these. Press H to hide, by the way. And we're going to start with the bottom piece and how it is intersecting with the hilt. So we'll select the hilt and we will press middle mouse button and drag to move over here on this panel and we're going to select the modifier window. And we're going to add a modifier and the modifier we're going to add is a boolean. And now this has brought this menu up and the modifier is being applied to the object we've selected, which is the hilt. And we need to select the object that the operation is going to be performed on. And you'll kind of see what the boolean modifier does by me selecting guard button. Now that's deleted all of that, which is weird, but if we go difference, then this is the operation we want. But you can see, god, that looks ugly, doesn't it? And the reason for that is because, if we just remove it for the moment, we press hide, and we look at the face that was actually being cut, pushed into or clipped into by the bottom guard. We can see there's actually just this square here, and that kind of confuses the modifier. So if we just press alt right click to delete all these vertices, and then alt right to select this loop, and go in 7 to go to top view, extrude with E, scale, bring it in, Alt M, and merge them all at the center. So that's giving us a nice flat face. So now if we bring the bottom guard back in, and we go back into object mode, and we select boolean operation again, and guard bottom, that's done the opposite of what we've done. As you can see, this part's been so, whatever, we'll, we'll select difference instead, that's the one. But as you can see, what that has actually done, you can't really tell because of all this mess of wires, but it's actually cut the shape of the bottom into that flat face we just made. So, the reason that is, is because we selected the hilt and applied the modifier and the object to the guard bottom. So we need to do the reverse of that. So, Close that off, select guard bottom and boolean modifier on guard bottom and the object we're going to select is hilt. Now, same thing, difference. And as you can see, that has removed this internal geometry that was conflicting with the hilt. So we apply that and now we have perfect. No internal geometry, perfect for Peppercora and as you can imagine we would go through the rest of the model just editing it in about the same way just removing all that internal geometry but the problem is is that we're not always going to be able to do it as easy as that because there are more complicated shapes in this like for example the middle guard this separates the bottom guard into two objects because if we want just this outside bit then it's going to cut it into two different things so we would need to kind of rip these middle faces open and separate the objects and then perform the boolean separately so but it's never going to be the same process because i imagine for example, if you use this on a different model, you know, a different sword or shield or any kind of model, 
it's always going to be different. Cause it's it's like solving a puzzle, really. It's going to be a different... Well, the tools are the same, but the process will be a little different. But I'll just show you going through the model again. Bring it all back. Uh, other examples. So, say, for example, this diamond and this top guard is going inside it, isn't it? And actually it's going inside the middle. So let's just go through how we'd remove that. And actually the middle guard is going into the hilt. So let's remove that from the hilt first. Let's start from the bottom. Now, add modifier, boolean, object, hilt, and difference, done. I'm sorry if I went too fast for you, but we'll be doing it again in a moment. So once again, let's try with a diamond. We'll add the boolean, and the object we're going to select is guard top. And once again, difference. Ah, and that is actually. Has that done what we wanted it to? Because it doesn't look like it to me. And so if we select it the other way round, because sometimes we need to do that. Actually, you know what it is? Is that we need to remove what guard guard top from the inside of guard middle. So if we select guard middle and then do boolean, guard top, difference, and that is actually inset the faces of guard top inside of guard middle, which isn't good either. So, how do we combat this problem? I would say first we need to into guard middle and remove what did we call the diamond? We didn't even name the diamond. But zero 05. So let's try that. Difference. And that's deleted that perfectly. So we'll apply that. And then we'll add um, another boolean. And the object this time will be guard top. And once again, difference. Hmm, same problem. So We've we'll got guard top and add a modifier here, boolean, and try with the middle difference. Perfect, that's done what we wanted. Apply now, try the same thing, and this time with the diamond, which was called 05 difference. Perfect. So, we're going to remove all of that internal geometry. Uh, we still have this bit. Um, which would be quite a pain. Um, but you get the process, you get the idea. Uh, the reason this part would be a pain is because if I were to try and say add the modifier on boolean um, guard bottom and difference. So it's actually done the same thing that has inserted the face. And the reason is is because as you remember before, we used the diamond to cut the internal geometry from guard top, which made it into two pieces separately. And then that was easier in removing the internal geometry from guard middle of guard top. Get very confusing. But the same principle applies. We'd need to separate guard bottom into like two different parts. Like we'd rip these faces apart and to rip vertices apart we'd press V. And just make them apart, if you get by me. But this video is, how long are we going now? 13 minutes. Yeah, so as you can imagine, we'd be here all day. But the point is, is that you can use Blender in order to make your paper craft models better. For example, I mean, the handle of this is, well, it's like hexagonal. And that's not ideal, because it's not round, is it? And if we even look at the texture view to see the textures that are on it, that's actually in real life would want that three dimensional. So, especially for like if we were making like a, a prop or a cosplay prop or something like that, we'd want more detail. And especially with the with the textures mirrored in that way, it'd actually continue going down. But my point here is that you can use Blender in order to improve your creations. So, just to give you an example of that, very simple. I'm just going to remove the triangles from this with Alt J. And say we added 
uh, subdivision, which is a very basic modifier that's used often. And as you can see, what subdividing does is it actually creates more geometry, so it's less hexagonal. Well, well not hexagonal, but you know, there's more polygons and you can keep going. But as you can see, it's created a weird effect, but to combat that weird effect, you know, of it distorting because that's what the Catmull Clark uh, subdivised in well, does. I would create a loop cut and just drag it up like that and that gives us that tight um, corner like like before and that's how we do that um, but that was just to make the point of what you can do now I'm wearing this video um, just to go through it again you can see how at the beginning we had all this internal geometry but now we just have these nice separate objects except for this part because this part is a pain in the ass so i'm going to leave this here uh, thanks for watching